Okay, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the virtual Board of Education meeting tonight. I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask for everyone to please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, before we get started, I, I want to again uh, apologize, but also let the community know that the board has decided to move this meeting to a, a remote meeting uh, due to the snowstorm that we are currently having, and that uh, we will carry our business forward as per the posted agenda. So we'll start with, uh, is there any public comment to be brought before the board tonight? Uh, so Mr. Nolan, we did not receive any comments as of 3 p.m. today. So there were no public comments at this time. Okay. Uh, and then I could roll right into the superintendent's report if you'd like. That would be great. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I wanted to one, just thank all of our students, families, and staff for their ongoing efforts in terms of dealing with um, COVID-19 in our schools and uh, for their continued efforts and, and really the success that we're having. To date, we've had 38 positive cases of students or staff within the school. And I have to tell you that the Department of Health is consistently praising the measures we have in place to limit the number of close contacts and potentially at, um, impacted individuals. I wanted to just thank um, the community for their ongoing support, certainly our students, our families, and our staff. Uh, I wanted to also mention that there's been some talk and discussion around micro, micro clusters. It's an initiative on the part of the governor with respect to requirements. Should you be in a designated zone, uh, then there's some testing requirements associated with it. I'm going to be sending out a letter from my office tomorrow about micro clusters and that initiative. So be on the lookout in your email uh, for that. And then finally, you may have heard um, already that we do have a snow day tomorrow, and that is a traditional snow day. And I hope that you all received the phone call from me. Um, and it certainly wasn't my doing. The, the voices of our Bayville Intermediate fifth grade chorus from last year, you know, they sang that last year in the, in the early part of the year, and then we didn't have any snow days. So it was a great opportunity to use that. So I hope everybody enjoys the, the day off tomorrow and I'm sure it's much needed from everybody. And then lastly, from my office, from the district, and certainly I think on, on the behalf of the Board of Education, we'd like to wish everybody a very happy and healthy holiday season and a happy new year. Um, and once we're done with school next week, we look forward to welcoming, all, welcoming you all back um, after the new year. So thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Graham. Uh, we'll now move into unfinished business, and I'm going to turn it over to the Vice President of the Board, Margaret Marshawn, for the second reading of policies. Thank you, Brian. Um, as per listed on the agenda tonight, this is the second reading and adoption of the policies listed in the agenda. Is there any discussion from any board members? If not, um, we're ready with those with those policies. Okay. Okay, we now have uh, adoption uh, under B. So Dr. Graham, we're gonna take action now to adopt well, the policy that was listed. Yes, yeah, so the adoption is on part A. That's the uh, second reading and adoption of that group. So you have to have I a see. motion for that group. Okay, so we'll move anything else for unfinished business. If not, we're gonna move into new business and it will be now the uh, first reading of the following policies. Um, again, uh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. Well, wait. just Brian, you need to, are you, I don't know, sequentially, are you going to do the motion now for the, that first group, A1? We, we could. Group. Yeah. We could. Okay. Okay. So do we have a motion to uh, accept A1 as presented in the agenda? Motion. Motion by trustee seal, seconded by trustee Themis. Any questions? All in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. Okay, so we'll go back now into the new business for the first reading of the following policies. I'll turn this over to the vice president. Again, um, all of the policies are listed uh, in the agenda under new business. 
Um, this is the first reading. No action is required by the board, uh, but if there's any questions or discussion of the board, now would be the time. This is just the first, first reading, no, no adoptions, no action needed. Do you want to read, uh, read, just read those policy numbers and the policy name? Sure, sure. We had um, thought there was just a lot of them tonight and we were going to not, okay. but that's fine. I could do that. Policy 2315, uh, board work <laughs> sessions. Policy 6240, investments. Policy 6800, payroll policy. Policy 9225, acceptable use policy for employees, consultants, volunteers, and other district authorized personnel use or of district computers, networks, internet access, and email systems. Policy 9240, recruiting and hiring. Policy 9241, part-time and substitute professional staff employment. Policy 9310, support staff positions. Policy 9551, conditional appointment and emergency conditional appointment student safety policy. Policy 9610, Staff substance abuse, policy 9620, child abuse in an educational setting, exhibit 9620E1, confidential report of allegations, exhibit 9620E2, notice reporting requirements of child abuse. Um, so those, any questions there? Okay, and then the next group are policies that are gonna be rescinded. Um, this goes back to the uh, NISBA audit that they went through our policies and these policies are either, they're no longer needed or we have them covered in other policies. Policy 6800, payroll procedures. Uh, 9125.1, staff substance abuse policy. 9135, suspected child abuse by a district personnel. And 9241, arrangements for professional staff substitutes. Let okay. me just let me just add that um, these policies will be posted on the website for till the next meeting for any comment by the public. Thank you, Susan. All right, my uh, my thanks to uh, the Vice President Marshawn, the committee, the policy committee, as well as uh, the district clerk Susan Hammerschmidt uh, for all their work on these uh, these policies. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, is there anything else for new business? Okay, there being none, we'll move into consent agenda. Uh, can we have a motion to accept consent agenda items A through E as presented on the board agenda? Motion by Trustee Del Tato, seconded by Trustee Vasilu. Any questions on the consent agenda? I just had a question. Um, Section 8, high-risk athletics are not running, and I just wanted to know what do we do about those coaches, um, are they, we don't pay them. Was this go back to the original agreement that we had with the coaches at the beginning of the year? Where do yeah, we so um, when we appointed coaches, and I know that there are two on here for the winter season, uh, that's a, for a retroactive start for the preseason workouts that they did. Uh, you'll notice that every appointment for a coach that's been on an agenda, including this one, there was a salary at 25% uh, column and then the rest uh, within the salary. So um, these coaches and those coaches who are coaching sports that don't run will have gotten the 25% for the work that they did in the preseason. And then if the season doesn't run, then they wouldn't uh, receive the remainder of that salary. Okay. And right now, just refresh my memory. Are we slated for the low risk? They they think they're going to run. We, um, to our knowledge, we are still hearing that um, the low risk are still running. So we are planning with winter track and bowling beginning on January fourth, and um, we still hadn't heard uh, further information and clarification on the high risk, which is basketball and wrestling. Um, so we're still awaiting information from the that's at the state level. You know, the one thing that we did here was the um, the state championship for those particular sports had been canceled. That was the latest announcement from the New York State Public High School Athletic Association. And now and now we're waiting for uh, any further information on the rest of the season. Okay, Dr. Graham, I, I just want to. I'm getting texts that we're not live. Yeah, I just want to interrupt. I don't know if we're live or not. 
Uh, so I just got a text that it it was not that it was broadcasting on the wrong feed. It was uh, a private feed. He's fixing it. That that's being fixed right now. I don't know if what you want to what you'd like to do. I mean, it's it is still being recorded that we can put the meeting up there. Um, I don't have any additional information. If you, I mean, the meeting was short. <laughs> the meeting short enough. We could, you know, you could do it again theoretically. Um, <laughs> you don't need to. We, I mean, I could certainly once it's once it's live, I can just let everybody know that we had heard that there was a technical issue with it, and then uh, make that announcement that it'll be up on our website. Is probably okay. later today. Is Roger able to uh, to fix it now, or is it? Uh, Anthony, are you hearing? I'm got a text that says uh, from Ken Packard to get off the phone with Roger, and that Roger is um, sent it to a private feed. He's correcting that, and will be live in a minute or two. All right, so we'll reset for a moment so we can continue the rest of the meeting. Okay. Maybe, um, Margaret, maybe you can just give a quick recap of the policy. Just say we have policies for second reading, first reading. Okay. Are we are we live again? Not yet. Let's give it a oh, minute. Okay. I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily read every policy number again, but. I was going to just say that we, the board took action on adopting the policies, correct, Ken? Would that be all right? right? Yeah, I mean, once I get an indication that we're live, I like I can make the announcement that we understood that there was technical difficulty, um, that the meeting will be posted, and that we can give almost like a little bit of a recap on where we are. Okay. And then we're not going to read those policies off again, right, Margaret? We'll just say that they were uh, up for a first reading this evening. Mm -hmm. Okay. You read them so well, too. Thank you. <laughs> you know, Brian, I forgot you weren't on yet. Ken and I were discussing just to not read them, because especially the first, the second readings, because okay. we read them last. So that's where I forgot when okay. you came back on, we started. No problem. Uh, Joe Zito apologizes for his absence this evening. He's uh, got stuck at work because of the snow. So we're just, uh, we're in a holding pattern, okay? Mm-hmm. So um, I'll continue. Uh, well, I just want to take a moment to uh, to apologize to the to the public. Uh, we did find out we had a, a technical uh, technical glitch. Uh, so just to do a quick recap, uh, we did call the meeting to order. Uh, Dr. Graham gave us a report, and uh, we did have a reading, a first reading of policies, and the board did take action, accepting uh, and adopting policies as presented by uh, by the policy committee. Uh, so now we are into consent agenda. We have a motion uh, by Trustee Del Tato, a seconded by Trustee Vassilou, and uh, Vice President Mar Margaret Marchand had a question. Uh, has that question been answered? Yes, yes. The question was about winter sports, and Dr. Graham uh, said that as it stands right now, January 4th, the low risk will sports will happen as of right now, and that the high risks have been canceled. And that my question was just about the coaching. And that was all answered. Um, well, just with the high risks, we don't have confirmation that they're canceled. The state championships for those are canceled. Oh, I thought I I thought I had read it somewhere. Okay. 
that we have we so we have not received anything from the New York State Public High School Athletic Association I'm saying sorry. that the season is canceled. Um, it's there's no start date in in uh, that's been indicated, uh, and there's been no guidance on how those can proceed. You know, the date has always been January fourth, and we've been waiting uh, waiting more information, but we haven't heard yet. I apologize. I read in Newsday, two specific districts had canceled it. Yes. Yeah. Outs that's where my confusion is. I apologize. Yeah. Okay, are there any further questions? If not, I'll call all in favor. John, I can't see your hand, I'm sorry. Are you in favor? Thank you. It's unanimous. Uh, before we move on to the last item on the agenda, I do want to just extend uh, apologies from Trustee Zito, who got uh, stuck at work due to the snowstorm and has to be excused this evening. Uh, the last item we have is an additional action item. Uh, it is the agreement for COVID-19 testing services. Uh, the superintendent recommends that the board adopt the resolution whereby the Locust Valley Central School District Board of Education authorizes the district to enter into an agreement with ATC testing and screening services uh, for the provision of COVID-19 testing for the 2020-2021 school year as submitted. I'll ask if there is any discussion on that item. Uh, Trustee Themis. Um, Ken, can we just clarify um, that we're voting strictly, strictly on this contract to utilize this company, this what we're voting on has nothing to do with the policy or plan surrounding testing of the, the students should we enter into one of these zones. Is that correct? That's correct. You may you may recall that there was a provision that should should any district be it uh, fall within a yellow, orange, or red zone that there are testing requirements to maintain in person learning, and there were several options to doing that testing. One is to train people within your own district and have them conduct the tests. The second is um, to not do the testing at all and go fully remote. The other is you could uh, encourage everybody in your community and that's students or staff to go get tested on their own uh, and then bring that test result to the to the district. And the other one is to work out some agreement with with a group um, to that could that could come on site and set up the testing and conduct that testing. That's the agreement that the board is voting on. The details of when the testing would occur, um, you know, all of those types of things. And look, that's only if we're designated as a yellow, orange, or red zone. This is not a, a plan to set up testing tomorrow and have it open all of the time as a drop-in service or something like that. This is should the district fall within a red, orange, or yellow zone, this is a company that will come in and provide that testing with the details between the district and the company to be worked out in terms of when and, and that type of and, and this wouldn't um, stop anyone from getting a test elsewhere. This is just an, uh, an option for someone yeah, in the district. That, that's correct. So, you know, our, the, the concern is, is that if Locust Valley School District falls into a yellow zone, then chances are there are a lot of other school districts that are also going to be designated as yellow zone schools. And then we know that the lines at uh, our own doctors or some of the walk-in places have been have started to get longer and longer uh, as there's been an increase in testing. And so this is uh, really a service that we would provide to the students and staff of the community. So that would help us meet that 20% testing requirement. And as I mentioned earlier, Lauren, that's something that there'll be a letter going out with a little bit more information tomorrow on. Okay. Thank you. Trustee Vasildo. Dr. Graham, for the entering into the agreement, it's a, a requirements contract, right? So we're not going to be, there is no cost to the district unless actual testing services are in fact needed and ultimately utilized. Is that correct? That is correct. And there's actually, you know, the, the way the company works is they do the PCR testing and they utilize the uh, personal insurance of the individual. So either the student or the staff, uh, if an individual doesn't have insurance, then they can provide um, 
their social security card, you know, social security information to the company, and then they would bill that through the the CARES Act. Um, so they, would, they shouldn't be out of pocket expenses to the individual either. So no cost to the district, nor to the individual. Good. Any and other I trust, just, Vice President yeah. Marshall? Okay. As of last week, um, Governor Cuomo hadn't redefined his yellow, orange, and red zones. Has he defined them? I, I watched, I think, on Monday, but I haven't watched him all week since then. Has he defined what the zones are? Um, so there's not there's not a number that says, okay, this is the metric that you fall into yellow or uh, orange or red. It's a combination of uh, multiple factors, including positivity rate within the community, hospitalizations um, within the area. So there are a number of metrics that they utilize um, to determine what the red, orange, and yellow zones are. And I think we had the conversation um, at the last board meeting where we had talked about the idea of concentric zones where red being the most intense and then setting up orange as a, a circle around that and then yellow as a, a circle around that. And that's when Lauren had brought up the idea that, well, now there are some yellow zones also that don't surround orange and red. And that's true as well. Uh, that there are these precautionary zones as well. Um, so we don't have what the metric is. When they were initially set up, I think 3% was the metric for a yellow zone. Um, and we are all, the entire Long Island is in excess of that 3% at this point. So I, I think they've backed off some of those numbers at this point, um, again, to hopefully maintain in-person learning. And have they given any guidance if you get into a zone and you're we're required to do that 20% testing, have they outlined how you get out of that requirement of the 20% testing? Yeah. Uh, so once you're in a yellow zone, you do the 20% testing within the first two weeks. And if the positivity rate of the school is lower than the community, uh, then you don't need to continue that testing. Similarly, when you're in an orange and red, you're looking at positivity rate within the random sampling of students and staff in the school community versus the outside community. Uh, and each one of those has a provision then where, you know, once that rate is below that you do not have to continue that testing. I don't, I don't know that that's into perpetuity. You know, in other words, if the, comp if the community rate goes up again, if there's a new requirement, but I know that you don't have to continue on a biweekly basis at that point. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, we have a motion to accept the additional action item as presented. The trustee Steele, we have a second. Trustee Vesilu, all in favor? Okay. Opposed? Okay, one, two, three, four. That'll be one, two, three, four, five in favor, one opposed. Okay, so the motion carries. Uh, anything else to be brought before the board this evening? If not, I just want to, uh, on behalf of the Board of Education, I wish everyone, our staff, teachers, students, and our community, a very wonderful holiday season, a very healthy new year in 2021. Uh, we will have a uh, board meeting on Wednesday, January 6th, 2021. Uh, it will also be uh, will be posted. So uh, happy holidays to everybody and uh, with your family. If there's no other business, I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. Trustee Steele, seconded. Trustee Del Tato, all in favor? Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Thank you. Have a good holiday. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy holidays. Night. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. Night. Happy Enjoy. holidays. Good night.